this topic's going to get me probably a lot of uh, mean comments down in the comments section. Uh, but I want to talk about it anyway and give some examples of where I'm coming from. And uh, it's a con conversation about HTML5, which I use HTML5 for pretty much... Uh, all of my GUI interfaces, regardless of what programming language I'm writing in, whether it be C or Bash or I don't really do much Python anymore, but if I did, I'd probably use HTML for that. But the conversation comes uh, mainly when we're talking about gaming. And although I will admit that it may not be the absolute best option for all scenarios, HTML5 is a great option for game design. Uh, yeah, if you're developing, if you're working for a big company, you're developing um, a very, very high-end game. I'm not saying you can't create the game in HTML5 uh, as the interface, uh, but it's probably not the best option, and, and I'll, I'll give you that. But some people are just so against HTML5, it, and it's silly because those people, are their mindset is what HTML used to be for years ago, and HTML was stagnant for years. It was very limited. And I actually recently had a conversation, some of you might have seen, in the IRC channel with someone uh, where they were talking about how great Flash was. And let me, let me set the record straight, and most people know this, Flash is a load of crap. Always has been, always will be, it's just horrible. Um, it did fill a need for a time. It was the only option to accomplish certain things uh, in a web browser uh, at a certain time, but HTML5 has surpassed all of that. I don't keep up to date much on Flash uh, since I haven't used it in years, um, but but HTML5 allows for uh, WebGL use, which will allow hardware acceleration and true 3D graphics, which uh, at least when HTML5 first started doing it, Flash did not have those capabilities, I'm 99% sure, and I don't know if it does at this point. And uh, let's get into the conversation a little bit more about what I'm talking about and give you some examples here. But basically, people think that HTML5 is horrible for game design. And my argument that is my argument with a lot of things when people complain about a lot of stuff is a lot of it comes down to the person doing the programming. A person who knows how to program properly can, can get a lot more out of a system than someone who can't. And... Um, when it comes to HTML5, again, you have WebGL, which is just OpenGL. It's running on your machine. OpenGL, which is used by a lot of games, for example, Doom 3 used OpenGL, and that was an incredible game. And WebGL is no different. WebGL is just uh, an API that allows JavaScript to talk to the OpenGL. So OpenGL is going to use your GPU if your system is set up right, and it's going to render great. Uh, the problem comes in when it comes to gaming is the other part of the game, which in most cases you're going to get your most lag when it comes from when it comes to uh, physics and collision detection. There's a lot of math there, and JavaScript is not the best for that. But again, in most cases you're going to be using JavaScript for these, but you don't have to. You can be using pretty much any language you want. HTML5 isn't the language you're programming in; it is just the GUI interface. But even if you are using um, JavaScript, you can optimize your code to run great. But even if you don't, and I'm going to give you examples here. Uh, I went to Walmart, and then I also went to Sam's Club. And my my test for these things is I run uh, I try to run a real world test. So. I'm looking at machines under $200 here, because if you can get your game running on a machine that's under $200, uh, then, because there's only so much the hardware can do, but $200 is, is a fairly low price margin for gaming, and you're not going to be playing any really high-end game on a $200 tablet or phone, but what can you accomplish with almost, you know, no optimization in your code whatsoever. Well, I found you can get pretty good optimization. So these tests, and I have, I've had this code, this is code I wrote years ago, it's up on my website, I'll put links in the description to the files, um, were written in uh, Babylon.js, which isn't the, the best platform, I much prefer 3.js, um, but it's, and I have examples with and without physics and with and without textures, spheres, and, and basic cubes. And um, the real test here is I think I did tests with, uh, with physics with spheres on all these. So you got a higher poly than you would with, a, with just a square. 
or I mean a cube. Uh, but uh, the max that it will allow you to run is at 150, uh, I'm sorry, 150, 60 frames per second. So best case scenario, you're going to get 60 frames a second out of these. And in my opinion, and people will argue, especially gamers will argue with me on this, as long as you're over 30 frames a second, you're going to get pretty good results. So how many objects can you get going in a scene uh, with physics uh, going in collision detection with no optimization whatsoever uh, before you drop below the 30 frames a second? on a machine that is $200 or less. So let's have a look at these examples here. So here we're looking at a $98 Samsung tablet, obviously not a power beast of a machine, and it's starting off at 30 frames per second, which isn't very much, but I think that's the most you're gonna really get out of a machine like this. Here we're looking at another, uh, it's a Chromebook, $179. See, we're getting better performance right off the bat. We're getting our max of 60 frames per second, and it does drop rather quickly though, but still, we're still over the 30 frames per second at 300 mesh, but once we get to 300 of those spheres, again, spheres that have physics and collision detection uh, going, uh, then we start to drop below uh, acceptable numbers for me. Here we're looking at the same machine, but we're removing the physics and the collision detection, and we're just using uh, low poly um, cubes with textures on them, and you can see we're getting that 60 frames per second, well over those at 300 mesh mark. And it's gonna stay at that number for quite a while because again, it's not the HTML, it's not the WebGL, it's not the rendering of the 3D environment that is the issue. It has to, uh, your performance issue in this sort of scenario is gonna come from the physics and the collision detection, which not every object in your game is going to have physics and collision detection or need it throughout the entire game. And that's what I'm talking about when opti I say optimizing your game. Here we're at about 1,000 of these mesh and we're still well over uh, 40 frames a second. Here we're looking at a $169 machine and here we're getting, uh, you know, about uh, 60 frames a second off the bat. We're at about 200 of those spheres that have physics and collision detection going, and we're still at about 60 frames a second when we get to the 300 mark. After 300 mark, it starts dropping a little bit, but still in what I would consider uh, good performance for uh, something that I would be creating. But once I get to about 500 of these spheres, again, with collision detection and, uh, and um, physics, then it starts to drop below what I would consider acceptable. Looking at a $179 Chromebook here. Again, we're starting off pretty good around that 60 frames per second. Again, you can see a difference, again, between having physics and collision. And again, not every object in your game is going to have uh, all that stuff going on, but the rendering of the image is still pretty good. Here again, uh, it seems like these, uh, you know, closer to $200 uh, mark tablets do good till about 500 of these spheres get going, all bouncing, colliding into each other with uh, pretty decent collision detection, but with, again, no optimization on any of that. Here we're going back to that original Samsung $98 machine. Just to show you again, that one originally was only getting 30 frames a second. And here it is again with the cubes with no physics or collision detection, just some textures. And again, it's maxing out at 30 frames a second, 31 frames a second, um, which is pretty much the, the best uh, that in this scenario you're going to get out of this machine. Uh, you'll see here um, at one point it does drop below the 30 frames a second when I click on the screen and I make the camera jump because now it's calculating the physics in that camera again using the CPU for calculating that not the GPU for rendering but as you can see without the physics it was holding that 30 frames a second that pretty high number of mesh we're, we're still at 28 29 frames per second here and we're pulling up on a thousand mesh uh, and here you'll see I'm going to click the screen and it makes the, the, the camera jump and you can see it drop down to about 24 frames a second there. One last machine we're going to look at here, $177 is over at Sam's Club, another Chromebook. Uh, and again, it's going to... Uh, be about the same as the other Chromebooks in that price range, starting off at 60 frames a second until we got to about uh, 300 mesh, and then it's dropping down to about 50 frames a second. But I would say that it's playable with about 500 um, of these spheres going with collision detection and physics. And again, that's having all of those objects with those features. So just look, and again, I'm gonna get a lot of complaints down in the comments from uh, uh, people, probably mostly gamers, 
uh, who I have little respect for. Um, I mean, gamers over-exaggerate everything. There's gamers out there who still use, use PS2 mouse, mices, mouses. They, they'll use a PS2 mouse uh, because they think they're going to get better performance out of it, which is just completely unrealistic. Um, but that's, the, that's their mindset. Um, and, and for them, anything under 60 frames a second is probably horrible, and I, I disagree with that. I mean, I can watch a, a, a film movie at 24 frames a second, and it looks fine. Why would the game be any different? Uh, 30 frames a second on, on most digital formats. And yeah, we're moving up for higher speed stuff, but the higher speed stuff is good for slow-mo stuff. Uh, and, and now we're getting into arguments that people, some people claim they see differences in, in, in performance. Um, but for me, 30 frames a second is great. You're not going to be playing an extremely high-end game with a lot of physics on any tablet uh, uh, of this caliber. Um, but as you can see, you can definitely get something playable. And again, that's without optimization. That's, that's when you're a programmer, again, as a programmer, you can write code. And I always go back to you know the classic example of John Carmack and not I'm not even just talking about Doom and the incredible things he did with Doom and and um, Wolfenstein but before that uh, when all these big companies were trying to get side scrollers on computers but computers just weren't fast enough and it was just determined that that computers uh, you know uh, personal computers PCs weren't fast enough and weren't going to be for a while because uh, machines like Nintendo were optimized for games and these weren't, uh, he created, he recreated uh, Mar uh, Mario Brothers 3 from scratch because he came up with a new technique for programming. And, and again, so even though he had these hardware limitations, he came up with an idea on how to program. And yes, it, he, I'm assuming, wrote it in C um, or something similar, but it wasn't that he wrote it in C. Everyone was trying to write that sort of stuff in C or similar languages. It's the fact that he came up with a concept of not refreshing the whole screen. He came up with that idea and was able to use it and he was able to recreate this game because he was a good programmer and he worked with what he had. Work with what you have. And yeah, again, I'm not saying it's the only option, but I hate when people criticize HTML5 uh, when it comes to this sort of thing. It works great, even on low-end devices, um, and I, I feel like in most cases, and different scenar cases have different scenarios, uh, have different you know tools you might need, but uh, the fact that with HTML5 uh, as your interface, people can run these games uh, without having to install anything and have to worry about getting infected by your 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 software as much because it's it's running in a browser which should contain it yes there's always going to be uh you know security issues here and there but it's not the same as downloading uh on, a, on your desktop computer or a tablet a program that could be doing anything uh and i think it's great and and again let's also i mean there's so many misconceptions about html html runs on your machine it's loaded through a network just like almost anything else you do, but once it's loaded, you don't need an internet connection anymore unless the game requires it for you know multiplayer or storing scores or whatever. HTML5 can be set very easily to run offline. You load it up once, you can disconnect, shut down your machine, turn it back on, go to that URL again, and it will be there. And you can also download and run it, run it locally uh, as far as hosting it yourself, or you don't even really need a server in certain situations. Um, but not that that's that that's 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 just options on what you can do anyway again feel free to tell me how wrong i am down in the comments i do thank you for watching and taking this time this video is a little bit longer uh for these talk videos but i sure hope you enjoyed it thank you and have a great day